Welcome to our Good Friday worship service. This service is a service of Tenebrae. Tenebrae has a rich tradition in the church dating back to the 8th century. The word Tenebrae is derived from Latin meaning darkness. Through word and music, this service dramatizes the suffering, death, and burial of Jesus. 
The seven candles on the altar symbolize seven encounters or experiences that occurred during Jesus' last hours. With the conclusion of each, a candle will be extinguished. As the service moves from light into darkness, the diminishing light symbolizes the fading devotion of the apostles, as well as the gradual dying of our Lord. At the end of the service, the sanctuary will be in darkness. The congregation at that time is asked to leave silently. We begin our worship with bidding prayer. You may kneel or remain seated. Let us hear once more of our Lord's passion and death. With heart and mind, let us go to Gethsemane, to the halls of judgment and the hill of Calvary. Let us hear in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose in Christ's suffering and his ultimate sacrifice for all humankind. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace and justice on earth, and for the unity and mission of the church. Tonight, we pray for God's holy church, in every land. Lord, your power is beyond our imagination, and yet you sent your son to us as a humble carpenter, riding into Jerusalem on a colt. By your Holy Spirit, guide your church to gather in unity throughout the world, to share the good news of your grace in Jesus Christ with all people, and to serve our neighbors with kindness and humility. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tonight we pray for all servants of your church, for our bishops, pastors, deacons, ministry leaders, and for those who have gathered to worship tonight and those who could not be with us. Lord, your Holy Spirit guides our steps each day. Help each of us to do your work in the church and in the world as you have called us to, with generosity and open hearts, and keep us in health and safety. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Tonight we pray for all of our siblings in Jesus Christ, for what we share in common, and for our differences. Lord, it is in your name that we have our unity. It is in our baptism into Jesus Christ that we are truly one. Unite us again into one fellowship and grant us your favor as we work together to share your good news with the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Tonight we pray for those who first received your promise. Long ago, you made your covenant with Abraham, Moses, Sarah, and Esther. Your promises are eternal, and the strength of your covenants cannot be doubted. We pray that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of your covenantal promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tonight, we pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, around the world, your name is said in many languages. Many who believe in you call you by another name. Bring an end to hatred between religions and give us the grace and courage to be faithful witnesses of your love for all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Tonight we pray for those who do not believe in you, O oh God.
You created us in an act of love, and you sent your son to us as one of us to show us that love. Let all people around the world see your love in our daily words and actions. They may come to know you and love you as we do. Help us to carry your light within us and to share that light with all we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Tonight we pray for all of God's wondrous creation. Lord, you have created everything we know, from the stars above us to the dirt beneath us, from gigantic galaxies to the tiniest atoms, from the dinosaurs of the past to the children who have yet to be born. You care for all that you have created. Help us to care for it as you do. Let everything you've made fulfill its purpose. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Tonight we pray for all who serve in public office, whether they are appointed by officials or elected by the people. Lord, you are the source of all of our knowledge and compassion. Your voice speaks on behalf of the weak and the downtrodden, the marginalized and the oppressed, those whose voices and needs are ignored. Give your wisdom to, to those who possess power so that they might use it for your glory, ensuring that all people may live in a world of justice and peace and share in your creation with generosity and compassion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tonight we pray for those who are in any kind of need. Lord, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, Free those unjustly imprisoned or oppressed, and deliver your world from dishonesty, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, and help them in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the offering. Let 
the songs I sing bring joy to you. Let the words I say confess my love. Let the notes I choose be your favorite too. Father, let my heart be after you. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. Jesus came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, 
drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put away your sword, put it back in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were abandoned? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. 
Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now, the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent, did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man, seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. So began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him and beat him. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels, 
who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to this custom. Then he asked them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. To see the King of Heaven fall in anguish to His knees, the light and hope of all the world now overwhelmed with grief. One Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they led him away. And they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Two others also who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, 
one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified Jesus. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, ha ha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests along with the scribes were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. Oh 
see the pain written on your face bearing the awesome weight of sin every bitter thought every evil deed crowning your blood stained From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from the top to the bottom, the earth shook, and the rocks were split, and the tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now with the centurion and those who were with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. i 
Tremble, tremble, were you 